All right. This is the entertainment uh, intermission portion. Uh, we're going to introduce a friend of mine, John Rollins. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I first uh, met John through my dear friend uh, Dick Cooper. And uh, I've always been a, a fan of rock stars. And to me, John's a rock star. He's photographed everybody. Uh, when I say everybody, you're going to see some pictures come up on the screen. And we invited John last year at Blues Fest to come in. And it was called A Conversation with uh, John Rollins. Uh, I'm going to give up the mic. And my first question to John is, how the hell did you get into this business of taking pictures? Johnny? Well, I, I started out uh, as a... Uh, 13-year-old kid in Manor Park with enough money to buy a ticket to a Brenda Lee concert <laughs> at the old YMCA uh, auditorium on Metcalf Street. And I'd seen her on the Perry Como show and fell in love with her and fought my way to the lip of the stage and took 12 pictures with my dad's camera. Then in leaving the building, I looked down the corridor and saw a little sign sticking out saying Brenda Lee and the Casuals, so I figured it's probably her dressing room. So. No security to make sure you left the building. I walked down, knocked on the door. Her mother answered and said, uh, what would you like? And I said, well, I'd just like to thank Brenda for a great show. And she said, well, come in and tell her yourself. <laughs> and uh, in I went. Uh, I spent a half hour with her, got her autograph, got her address, copied the tags of the station wagon waiting to load up and go home. And uh, that's where it all started. And uh, from there, uh, I got another job through her manager, working with a gentleman who came to Ottawa to do a CKOY radio show called uh, Coca-Cola Club with Keith Sterling. Anybody remember that? Anybody around here in those days? <laughs> Everybody moved down from our prayer, right? Yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, second job was with Sam Cooke. All right. And, uh, that, and then uh, third job was a young uh, kid from uh, Minnesota named Bobby V. Anybody remember Bobby V? Yes. <laughs> Bobby uh, found a lot of musicians here in Ottawa and took them on uh, world tours. You know, Teddy Giroux, anybody? Piano player? Uh, so, seeing it is the 50th anniversary of the Beatles, everybody wants to know, how the heck did you get to meet the Beatles? And, you know, I mean, we haven't met very many people who've met them personally. And we've seen pictures going up, and there's some actually over there that, that John is willing to sign and sell you. But how did you get that privilege to meet the Beatles? Well, in, in, uh, in moving to Toronto, the, the family moved there in 1962 from Ottawa. Uh, I wanted, because it was the capital of uh, Canada for uh, uh, recording artists, recording companies, and media, uh, I needed to have a, a nice job that would get me into a lot of concerts and whatnot, so I started knocking on doors and was picked up by Capitol Records uh, to start shooting this new lifestyle pop culture and uh, met the gentleman that uh, Paul was talking about earlier, uh, Paul White, at Capitol, and uh, did a Dave Clark Five tour for him in 1964, just missing the Beatles, and catching them in 65 as a staff member uh, freelance for Capitol Records, and uh, same in 66. So backstage between two shows at, at Maple Leaf Gardens, I run into uh, George Harrison talking to a technician and sat and talked with George for about 40 minutes until the press conference started and, uh, and that's how I met uh, George and got to, I actually had dessert with the guys before the press conference uh, in the green room before uh, going into the hot stove lounge. But uh, that's where the Beatle thing all started on a personal level and uh, Certainly, corporately, the uh, the nice uh, foursome of the guys that you, you may see over on the wall over here uh, has gone around the world. Was also in the Beatle comic book, in 1978, the Stan Lee Super Comic they called it, and uh, it has done very well for me since. I still own it. I still have the copyright on it, and uh, this year in particular, it's it's uh, it's a big deal that. Uh, Everybody seems to be celebrating our old age, so 40th of uh, 
the Coopers, and 20 for Uncle Bob, 54 for me. Uh, yeah, we got lucky. Uh, the, the band I played was the Fenton Brothers. John took our the band photo, so I'm really proud to have uh, that photo as a memory. And, uh, and a great story John told me was about uh, Elvis Presley. And uh, it was the larger Elvis Presley. And I think, John, you got hired by Colonel Parker to take some photos. I uh, actually got hired uh, through uh, RCA Canada when the Canadian president, uh, a gentleman named Ed Preston, uh, said, John, I'm going to send you down to Detroit to shoot uh, the, the new Elvis, not the uh, 50s, 60s Elvis. Uh, he's touring again, and uh, I, I'm doing that because in a month, the, uh, the three vi vice presidents of the Elvis Presley division are coming up for meetings here in Canada, and I, I just like to uh, knock these guys on their socks. So I went to Detroit and photographed Elvis, and uh, the three VPs came up and uh, said, hey, uh, Ed, uh, where did you get those pictures of Elvis? And I said, well, I sent my guy down to Detroit and, uh, and got them. And said, so everything was quiet for about a week, and I get a phone call next from uh, Fred Molina at RCA in New York. And he says, John, uh, you did a good job for Ed Preston, but uh, would you like to go on the road with Elvis? Uh, we, we'd like you to start doing some RCA pictures for uh, RCA in New York. So that led me to four years and 48 shows with Elvis and the boys in the band all over America. So. Uh, another photo, it's a, it's a personal favorite of mine, and it's the one you've got of uh, Brian Jones. For a lot of you kids that don't know, Brian Jones actually started the Rolling Stones. Yeah, it was Brian Jones and the Rolling Stones, the first official paid gig in Chelsea, England. And uh, he was always my favorite Rolling Stone. And in 1965, the photograph we have here tonight was taken uh, once again at that uh, auditorium on uh, uh, Metcalf Street uh, when the Stones played Ottawa. And uh, I'm hanging backstage mostly with Brian. And uh, he sat down and I said, uh, could you show me how to play? This could be the last time. And sure enough, he pulled out the Vox Phantom uh, white guitar he had, which currently is owned by Tom Petty, by the way, and uh, showed me how to play uh, This Could Be the Last Time. And I've shown it to many other guitar players and they go, no man, that's, that's not his. That's not even the right key. So hang on a second, I'll play it. And sure enough, I think, holy shit, that's it. <laughs> but uh, he was the comedian in the group. He was always having a lot of fun. Uh, back in the day when everybody was afraid that uh, you wouldn't want to do uh, any kind of weed or anything, they were mostly drinking alcohol to have a good time. And that's what uh, Brian and the boys were doing and uh, having a good time. And we, we had a great time here with uh, John Poser. Anybody remember John Poser? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else dance on the uh, on his TV show, Club yes. 13? I was there too. John was a friend of mine up until he passed away, but a great, great guy. And he showed up to do an interview in the dressing room in 65. And he had uh, probably 30 huge blow-ups of, of each Rolling Stone from English uh, kids' magazines. And, uh, and I don't know where they went to, but they signed every picture. And they'd be worth a lot of money if they're still around somewhere. But uh, John Poser was probably 10 years ahead of this whole media wave on the Brits and British invasion and all that kind of fun stuff. And the other, uh, you probably read the paper all over the place, all this exposure about David Bowie right now. And uh, John got lucky enough to photograph David Bowie. And to this day, a photo that John took of Bowie looking like an archer is one of uh, Bowie's most favorite photos. Uh, and all these folks are getting all this exposure, and John is the man behind the lens with David Bowie. Maybe you can just give a little little bit of information on what's going on with that and uh, how you hooked up with Bowie as well. Well, it was, it was another record company gig. Uh, RCA was my second largest account in Canada, and uh, uh, as always, uh, I, I would take care of the gold record presentation and the promo guys with the act and radio station biggies and all that stuff. 
and at the same time uh, ask of their uh, their actual road crew or whoever issues photo passes if I could shoot the show. And because I was there officially as the record company guy, then uh, it was very easy to come up with a pass and shoot the show. So back in 1974 at the O'Keefe Center in Toronto, I, I was there in the front row uh, with a photo pass from the band uh, and shot the uh, Diamond Dog show. And uh, they were very happy with all of that and, uh, and turned around and very quickly said, well, the, the uh, 1976 uh, uh, tour, a 1978 tour, uh, a stage pass and access to do it for a week at a time. I was on the road both times. Uh, it was very easy to get. And uh, in 76 on Station to Station tour, or what we call the black and white tour, I managed to get a shot of him uh, uh, pulling a fictitious bow and arrow shot. And um, I, I blew it up and brought it to him in 1993, and he signed it for me, saying, uh, uh, For John, one of my favorite photographs ever, David Bowie, 1993. So uh, I knew at that point that I'd, I'd impressed him quite a bit, but uh, I didn't understand it until almost three years ago. His manager phoned me and said, Do you still have that negative? Duh. And, uh, we're planning an exhibit in uh, in London, England, at the V&A, and uh, would like to use this as the uh, keynote press kickoff photograph for the world exposure uh, that the exhibit is there. And uh, I said I'd be very happy to be involved. Uh, we we also did uh, 300 limited editions signed by David and myself of that image in three sizes and. Uh, it's the largest selling limited edition in the history of the V&A in England. So. I got one more quick question. I think we have to move on to uh, let the other uh, dead flowers on. Uh, dead flowers? Uh, as if I'm a dead flower. Uh, anyway, it's just a quickie. You know, I was with my brother Andy here a few minutes ago, and all his friends took pictures with their camera phones. John. What do you tell kids now? Quickly. Well, if they got the right kind of money, you could buy a 40 megapixel cell phone. <laughs> there you go. So you don't need film, right? You don't need film, no, no. All right, well, John... Every gonna... second person is now a photographer. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. Thank you. They bought, what do we got for door prices? So everybody kept their ticket, right? When they come in, we have tickets, we gave away.